As I resolve our readiness to deal decisively with those who have been involved in those malfeasance. On the news tonight, National Security Council in the Niger Delta region. It's a serious disaster, but we thank God for His mercy. He also has called up their strike. After the defense eight months strike, direct members to resume immediately. Definitely, we will appeal the judgment. There's no doubt about it. Park nullifies a Damala APC government to primary election. The only bits that we can use, since they cannot deploy aircraft or whatever. Also tonight, Blackheads Park on East West Road. A warm welcome to the Network News on NTA tonight. I am Elizabeth Omori. Adiola Konya Kerry Joyce joins us from the city of Lagos, and Mohammed Ibrahim will join us from a degree later. Don't forget to start following this newscast live on our website, nc.ng slash live, as well as other social media platforms displayed on the screen. The National Security Council has ordered full investigations into all acts of sabotage undermining the nation's economic well-being in the Niger Delta region with a view to with a view to bringing perpetrators to justice. The Minister of Interior, Ralph Arik Bishala, announced this while briefing journalists after the council's meeting summoned by President Mohamed Buhari. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. Oil theft, pipeline vandalism, and illegal refining of crude in Nigeria's Niger Delta region and their negative impact on the country's economy have been a source of great concern to the federal government. It is estimated that the nation, which depends heavily on oil revenue, loses between 600,000 to 700,000 barrels of crude oil per day, amounting to over $1 billion monthly due to such acts of economic sabotage. The National Security Council, which deliberated extensively on the matter, resolved that enough is enough. We have ordered in the Council that the Office of the NSC, in conjunction with the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, SJF, to empanel a strong team that will investigate everything that is costing Nigeria such a huge loss that we are recording. And a report should be provided by that panel to the Security Council and the President. And as I resolve our readiness to deal decisively with those who have been involved in those malfeasance. The Council also directed the military and other security as well as intelligence agencies in Nigeria to do whatever it takes towards putting a stop to illegal mining activities across Nigeria. The Council was also briefed that a total of 101 Earth combatants were taken to Operation Safe Corridor and currently undergoing the process of de-radicalization at the center. These were ex combatants that have been in detention for several years who of course had had issues with terrorism. Some were convicted, they have served their term, others are awaiting trial. Nobody has been released to the open society. We also agreed on the need to fast track judicial process for prosecution of uh, terrorists to discourage others from becoming terrorists. The reported discharge of the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, by the Court of Appeal was also discussed at the meeting. It was observed that uh, Kanu was discharged, but 
he was not acquitted. Government is uh, considering the appropriate action to be taken on the matter, and uh, Nigerians will be notified in due course. We equally want to again emphasize the fact that uh, we are committed to ensuring a transparent, free and fair electoral process in the coming elections. All security forces and agencies are advised to maintain the law. Members of the council also reacted to the threat by Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State to buy AK-47 rifles for the state's volunteer community guards if the federal government fails to approve his request in one month. The government has made it categorically clear that it has not issued license to any state government or to any organization to uh, purchase firearms for subnational security formations. What is involved has to do with automatic weapons. Come on. The sole responsibility of licensing lies with the federal government agencies and also to be used by the government security agencies and not quasi security forces. So you do not ask for what you do not have power to acquire. During the meeting, President Muhammad Buhari once again expressed appreciation to the armed forces and other security agencies for the declining threat of insecurity with the gradual restoration of normalcy across Nigeria and urged them to sustain the temple. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. A thousand hectares of land allocated to investors by the Gumbi State Government has been inaugurated by Vice President Yemi Oshin Bajo. The Vice President also witnessed the signing of Memoranda of Understanding between the Gumbi State Government and six industrial companies. State House correspondent Jide Unifade reports. <laughs> A happy moment for the people of Gombe State. This is because these investors are committing 75 billion naira into the development of areas such as power, steel, mining, and raw materials production. The list also includes youth development, training, and capacity building. The signing of the Memorandum of Understanding formed part of the three-day Gombe Investment Summit 2022 with a the theme, Industrialization pathway to innovation, transformation, and development of Gombe State. The future of our country rests in the hands of business owners, in the hands of entrepreneurs, and all over the state, all over the country. The success that we have seen here in Gombe State is substantially on account of the effective collaboration of the private sector, the state government, and the federal government. Our federation benefits our people when states and federal authorities, alongside private actors, think and work together. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, who was commended for being a great inspiration to states in the economic drive, gives kudos to the governor for the achievements so far recorded and the bold steps towards making the state investors friendly. This state is poised for greater things in the next few years. The purpose of the summit, as Governor Inua Yahaya explains, is an effort to move in the people out of poverty to prosperity and assures local and foreign investors of continued safety and a conducive environment to carry out their businesses. The state is now working hard in order to make sure that we work together with the rest of the world and catch up, push all our people and lift them out of poverty and link them up to the developed world. The state has been adjudged the best in the ease of doing business. The, the governor is providing 1,000 hectares of land to investors. It comes with electricity capacity of 16 megawatts and water supply capacity. The vice president, before departing the state, laid the foundation of the industrial park named after President Muhammad Ubuari, whom the governor said has been leading states by example in putting in place critical infrastructure for the growth of the country. Jude Onifade, and the news. Still on economic matters, Nigeria is not oblivious of how global economic trajectory is affecting her. 
However, steps have been taken to sustain already growth patterns recorded in recent indices. That was the position of the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning as she joined other policymakers in the global debate on economy. Leah Katung Babatunde reports. Financial markets have reacted to the news that Nigeria is looking to restructure her debt as the cost of servicing it rise. The fundamentals are tightly roped as investors as well as creditors try to feel the pulse. Minister Zainab Ahmed speaks on what is at stake for Nigeria and the way out. We've been able to shift our loans from um, short tenors to medium and longer term tenors. We have to do the same thing for our international borrowings as well, bilateral loans and even some of the concessional loans that the periods could be stretched, should be stretched to give us more fiscal room. While we are working to increase revenue, to uh, improve on our revenue to debt service, we still need to be able to renegotiate and stretch out our repayment obligations to provide... So when you see dark clouds on the debt horizon, don't wait. Look at ways in which, in which you can extend maturities you can improve the matching of currency obligations with what you are earning yourself. In that sense, uh, what Nigeria is doing in the current environment is exactly what Nigeria should be doing. Right. Nigeria is not the only country in dire straits. The global economy is being weighed down by way too much baggage. There needs to be coordination there amongst the authorities. There needs to be thought about microprudential instruments I just said a lot, um, uh, that could potentially be adjusted for macro prudential re reasons such as the leverage ratio on banks to help ease this transition that's necessary from a monetary perspective. The debate was on the back of heightened inflation to levels not seen in decades, high debt levels and increasing strains from tighter global financial conditions amid a global fragmentation pressure. From Washington, D.C., I'm Leah Katung Baba Tunde, NTA News. And from Washington, D.C., we now move to the Gambia, where Nigeria is reviewing its market export strategy to strengthen existing bilateral and trade relations with the country. Comfort Amodo reports that this was highlighted at the maiden edition of the 2022 Gambia Nigeria MSME exhibition holding in Banjul. Micro, small and medium enterprise subsectors is seen to contribute approximately 60% of the total gross domestic product towards preparing the West African micro, small and medium enterprises capacity to boost intra-regional trade ahead of the AFCFTA. collaboration with Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria. Smedin and sister agencies in the Gambia are providing the enabling environment for MSMEs to promote value and market linkages. While Gambia is a trade hub to other neighboring countries like Senegal and Mali, Nigeria, on the other hand, is a major trade hub to several West African countries. The essence is to give opportunity to Gambian investors to invest in Nigeria and the Nigerian investors to invest in the Gambia. As we expect that Nigeria and the Gambia will be able to maximally develop our MSMEs to fully take advantage of not just the huge markets, but also enter other economic territories of uh, America, Europe, and Asia. This is to a great extent will help us direct our collective actions towards economic growth and employment. They've been loving what we're doing. They've been trusting our brands from our fabrics to our, our food process. Different fashion designers reach out to me requesting to have their fabrics produced by us. The collaboration between the NAPC and Smedin is to boost the subsector's export basket from Banjo, the Gambia, Comfort, and Modu, NTA News. You're watching the Network News on NTA. Let's take a break. The news continues shortly. Thanks for staying with the NTA. 
The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayo de Ariwola, has cautioned judicial officers to resist inducements to pervert the cause of justice. Justice Ariwola gave the advice at the swearing-in of the acting president, customary court of appeal of the Federal Capital Territory, Olabodi Ariwa reports. That was the acting president, customary court of appeal of the Federal Capital Territory, Justice Stanley Adekule Lawa, taking his oath of office before the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Odukayode Ariwola. The warm felicitations and congratulations over. It was time for the CJN to remind the new appointee and his brother justices of their position as role models of honesty and uprightness in the polity. At the lower rung of the judicial ladder, you are there to represent our interests and crystallize the image of the Nigerian judiciary by doing justice. A law with unmerited material possessions will not only weaken your reputation, but equally impair your sense of judgment. That is not my wish for your lordship anyway. However, you should always be very careful and vigilant too. Justice Lawa joined the FCT Customary Court of Appeal bench in 2011. His appointment as president in acting capacity followed the retirement of his predecessor, Justice Abaze Musa Abubakar Sadiq, in Abuja, Olabodarewa, NTA News. And the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has announced suspension of its eight-month-old strike. A statement by the union's president, Emmanuel Oshedeke, says the National Executive Council of the Union held an emergency meeting and reviewed developments since the union declared an indefinite strike on the 29th of August 2022. Following appeals by the President, efforts of the Speaker House of Representatives and other well-meaning Nigerians, Asunek resolved to suspend the industrial action. The union has directed all members to resume work with if immediate effect from 12 a.m. on Monday 17th, October 2022. Still on the suspended as a strike, NC News hit the streets to fill the polls of Nigerians. Yeah, I just hope it's just for the good and I just hope it's for a long term because I wouldn't want to go back to school having just four months to finish up and round up and then maybe like in three months they're calling back the strike due to some reasons they know best to themselves. So I just have like four months to finish up and then they took this strike from 14th of uh, this, uh, February of course and it's it's really heartbroken to be honest because we wasted a lot of time. Yeah, they have to they have to call it off because um, everybody is frustrated. They could not do any other than to dance with uh, their opponents so as to get what they want. If not, they will not get anything. Seriously, it's a setback to our economy. Uh, been having eight months, our children are at home. Honestly, it's a serious disaster. But we thank God for his mercy. He also has called up their strike. See, according to me, I feel they should insist on basic standard. Away from the ASO strike, the newly appointed Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Salu Abdulhamid Dembas, is assuring staff of the organization of capacity building and conducive working condition for improved productivity. The Director General gave the assurance while addressing numerous issues raised by staff during his first interface with them in Abuja, Joseph Watson reports. Though appointed as the new Director General of NTA in late September, this is the first time Salihu Adu Hamid Dembos will be formally having a general meeting with staff of the organization. With so much expectation in their minds, they flooded the new Director General with a number of demands for improved welfare and working conditions. And being a veteran broadcaster himself and a unionist, every issue brought forward seems familiar to the new DG, who assures the staff of collaboration with national and international organizations to improve capacity across the country. Whatever we find ourselves doing, we should do it to the best of our abilities. We should have good characters and exhibit those characters so that at least 
we should give better image to the authority. And of course, that has, also, has to also be replicated with what people see on air. Welfare and uh, his, his, his simplicity to approaching issues. Director's level, they were like this zone, this so after promotion, this zone, uh, there's no vacancy and all of that, and he made everyone of us to understand. Issues of health, like um, uh, issue of uh, upgrading our clinic. For the staff, there are signs of renewed hope for an NTA that will be first to be reckoned with again in the near future. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen. NTA News. To political matters, Chinumbu Shetima Ambassadors, a political support group of the All Progressives Congress, has commenced campaign with the distribution of campaign materials and inauguration of state and zonal coordinators in Abuja. Their group reaffirmed readiness to be vanguard of issue-based campaign as a tradition of the APC demonstrated in past elections. Our main function and responsibilities as state and zona coordinator is to concentrate on mobilization of eligible voters at the wards and at the units. Engagement with major stakeholders in the states and strike and strict contact with state and local government parliamentarians. Return back to your various states. Increase the moral of your local coordinators that are capable to deliver. Ensure factional politics, ensure a level playing ground, ensure all inclusiveness, and do not allow your partner interest to override the interest of Tinubu Shetima ambassadors as a support group and the All Progressive Congress as a party. Tinobu Shetim ambassadors also acknowledged the achievements of the APC led government as an advantage in the task ahead. And a federal high court sitting in Yola has nullified a governorship primary where Senator Aishatu Hamid Binani emerged a Damawa State APC standard bearer. The presiding judge, Justice Abdulaziz Anka, gave the order in a matter filed by Nuhu Ribadu, which challenged the conduct of the primary. Simon Asha reports. The All Progressives governorship primary election was conducted on May 26, 2022 with Senator Aishatu Ahmed Binani emerged victorious, not satisfied with the outcome of the election. Mulanu Ribadu headed to the Federal High Court in Yola, starting over voting, inclusion of delegates, not buying among others, praying for the cancellation of the primary election. After hearing from the first defendant, APC, second defendant, Senator Aishatu Ahmed Binani, and the third defendant, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Justice Abdulaziz Anka, Therefore, nullified the APC governorship primary election in Adama State based on irregularities in the process and non compliance with the APC constitution as well as Section 18, Sub 13 of the Electoral Act 2022. We were expecting that uh, the court would have ordered you know, a fresh primary to, to nominate a valid candidate for APC. As it is, the court has not made that particular order. It has addressed a lot of issues, but we still need to consider some of those issues in relation to what the law says. Definitely we will appeal the judgment. There's no doubt about it. He further restrained the second defendant, said to Ashito Ahmed Benani, to stop parading herself as a candidate of the APC for the 2003 governorship election in Adama State and gave all parties concerned right to appeal. In Yola, Simon Asha. Meanwhile, the Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party has urged the national chairman of the party to give a firm assurance that he would resign his position after the 2023 elections. This was part of a six-point communique at the end of the board's special meeting in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. <coughs> It's been a busy period for the Senator Adolfo's Wabara led Special Reconciliation Committee of the PDP to unite all factions of the party ahead of the 2023 general elections. The man on the driver's seat of the party and at the center of the controversy, Senator Yocha Ayu, also here, attending a beauty meeting in his capacity as member of the board to restore peace in the party. After hours of painstaking deliberations, a six-point communique issued, 
mandating the beauty chairman to offer apologies on behalf of all members who feel aggrieved by the public statements made by its members across the country that has widened the current division calling on all party leaders and persons close to them to desist from making further inflammatory remarks or granting press interviews called on the chairman of the pdp governors forum to convene the meeting of the pdp governors forum soon to call on all leaders of the party to match words with action and where commitments are made to unconditionally fulfill same. For the party's national chairman, Yocha Ayu, the meeting was a perfect platform to react to some allegations leveled against him by the governor of River State, Nyesom Wiki. I want to make it clear that at no time did I, as the national chairman of this party, collect any one billion naira from anybody? About one billion naira and one hundred million, and the BOT is satisfied with its explanations. The PDP Board of Trustees is to refer some of the meeting's recommendations to NEC for appropriate actions. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The National Working Committee of the Labour Party has affirmed the list of presidential campaign council for the 2023 elections. The committee, however, apologised to the presidents of the NLC, TUC, whose names were erroneously included on the list. David Irie reports. Controversy straight the release of the campaign council among some leaders who felt not carried along. Concerned about the development, the National Working Committee, in an enlarged meeting, reviewed and endorsed the list, but promised that a supplementary document to accommodate the initial omissions will be released soon. Chairman of the party, Julius Abure, presented the communique at the end of the meeting. Labour Party is fully ready and all parameters to prosecute the election in 2023 has been put in place. And at the moment, we are consolidating the momentum that will help us establish a new Nigeria come May 29, 2023. The party wants INEC to do more in ensuring the collection of permanent voters' card and raised concerns about the incessant attack on members of the party. The National Peace Commission should go beyond just signing peace accords. I think they should be also be able to also condemn acts and behavior that can cross chaos and bring disagreement in the political space. The enlarged meeting of the committee passed a vote of confidence on the chairman of the party. Away from political matters, the 2022 flood disaster is taking a dangerous dimension with more communities in Orashi region of Rivers State now submerged. Kingsley Amajiri reports that commuters are stranded along the east-west road. From Ndoni, Omok, Ngene to Okobe, more communities are going under the water each passing minutes. Communication and transportation have been disrupted. Many resort to locally made boats to get to their destination. Fears of health hazards and deaths are high, with community leaders calling for help. To evacuate those trapped. The East West Road has cut off. So it's only boats that we can use. Since they cannot deploy aircraft or whatever, they should deploy boats now to pull out the people. Residents of the affected areas say the 2022 flood disaster is now the highest in history as areas that were not affected in the 2012 incident have been submerged. The high grounds that we are left up till uh, yesterday are almost submerged now. People are staying on the third roads. People are staying on the uh, uh, story buildings. Lack of shelter and dwindling food situation are major concerns, especially for the children and the elderly. River State Government has constituted a committee with one billion naira support fund in Port Harcourt, Kingsley, Amajuri. NTA News. This is a network news on NTA. Let's head to Lagos where Adiola is standing by with some reports for us. Hello, Adiola. 
Hello, Elizabeth. It is a statement of fact that standardization is the heart and soul of global economy. But with climate change posing a threat to man's existence, experts say there is need for greater synergy and use of all available tools, including international standards, to achieve sustainable economy and slow down the rate of climate change. Michael Olaleye reports that this is the new orientation as global demand shifts towards standards for cleaner and safer development. Rapid globalization is opening up more markets and removing boundaries to trade. But one of the downsides to this accelerated development, according to key players, is the proliferation of fake and substandard products. Nigeria is not only mopping up and intensifying efforts to reduce the circulation of fake products, but through enforcement, port efficiency and collaboration, regulatory agencies like the Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, are winning the war. FCCPC as an organization is also prepared to work with ZON to remove more of these things from the markets. Beyond the successes recorded, there is a new orientation to align all global approaches to attaining the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs in which experts say standardized ideas and methods can help in saving energy and improving water and air quality. If we want the standards to play a role in translating the Sustainable Development Goals into concrete actions, we need to facilitate the participation of SMEs in their development. Nigeria is not taking the back seat in this regard as measures have been deployed to assist micro, small and medium enterprises to key into the greener initiative. To reduce the effect of greenhouse emission on the climate, the sun has established a lab here in Ikeja for testing of grid, of grid products such as solar panels and batteries. Accredited sun laboratories are available uh, to test products in line with standards. The SON said Building back better where it is more relevant will be achieved sooner than later once business operators embrace greener solutions. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. And for Nigeria to make impact in technological, political and economic fronts, embracing disruptive leadership is inevitable. This sums up the opinions on adopting the right leadership for the nation to realize its potential. Samuel Johnson reports that the Director General of National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Professor Ayo Motayo, led the discuss. The search for solutions to problems and enhancing economic and social status of people makes challenging status quo anti necessary. Creative and innovative leadership, in the opinion of Professor Ayo Omotayo, will make Nigeria great and make life better for the populace. Now we need to ask ourselves, where, do we, where are we, where do we want to be? And once we know exactly what the answers are, then we can begin to think in terms of disrupting houses currently. While commending the leadership style of the present administration of President Muhammadu Buhari, taking this further and entrenching destructive leadership of old order and approach of doing things are recommended. As a public servant, you disrupt by ensuring that um, you are accountable, you are uh, corruption free, and uh, you ensure that you carry everybody, the interest of, of the general public, the masses, is very paramount. You know, it's a disruptive world, a world filled with uncertainty, a world filled with volatility, a world filled with ambiguity, and complexities. So, you know, things have to keep changing. They also advise governments to encourage training of people before attaining leadership status. In Lagos, Samuel Johnson, NTA News. 
It's time for us to take another break, but do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media. You're still watching the network news. ICT has the potential to drive Nigeria to the highest level of economic prosperity if the country would harness the strength of its youth in that direction. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, stated this during the official handover of an ICT centre to a public school in Kano. Amin Umar tells us more. <laughs> The 30 computer capacity ICT center was constructed and equipped with internet and other ICT facilities powered with solar generated electricity. These are uh, work of computer and uh, enhanced learning and teaching uh, activities in the schools, uh, even within the whole community in general. Even the poor people that cannot afford to buy computers in the house, they have access to computer which is provided by the government. To for, to, to sustain the IT, uh, IT agenda of the federal government. At the handover of the center situated in Hotoro South Special Primary School in Nasarawa Local Government of Kano State, Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Malam Garbashi, who expressed the hope that the center, in addition to training the pupils, will create job opportunities. The young people who will benefit from this facility, they in turn will set up centers like this so that young people and young women, young girls who are less endowed will also benefit from access you know, to this system that has changed the entire world. Community leaders who spoke during the handover appreciated the federal government for the project, which they described as one out of many, assuring that it will be secured and maintained in a self-sustaining manner. In Kanu, Amin Umar, NTA News. In other news, the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria has given back to the society as part of its corporate social responsibility. Members of the association paid a visit to Doromi IDP camp and junior secondary school Kushi Abuja, where they donated some relief materials. Bosadi Abel reports. <laughs> The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the UN Agency for Refugees, says Nigeria has over 80,000 refugees and 3.2 million internally displaced persons in their need of assistance. This notes that corporate social responsibility is everybody's business, and this is where the role of the Association of National Accountant of Nigeria, ANAN, comes to play. As it launches its maiden edition of Corporate Social Responsibility Day nationwide. The 14th day of October is set aside to contribute her own quota in support of government efforts to protect the future of Nigeria. We believe that we are part and parcel of the growth of Nigeria and making Nigeria to be better than what it is even as of today. Some of the relief materials for both the school and IDP camp are computers, photocopy machine, school books and chairs, blankets, grains, medical items, and funds. This day is going to be a memorable day in this school. Little Aisha Musa, a beneficiary of the charity work Hope for a Secured Future in Abuja, boss at the Able NT News. The Federal Inland Revenue Service has intensified enlightenment campaigns in markets in other business places across Boucher State, aimed at educating traders on the importance of tax to social economic development of the nation. Charity Zaka reports that the taxpayers expressed willingness to continue paying their taxes as at when due. The second Thursday of every month has been set aside by the Federal Inland Revenue Service as Tax Thursday to create awareness on the activities of the service and importance of paying tax. These are some officials of Bochi State Office of the Federal Inland Revenue Service during a sensitization campaign in markets and business places where traders and other residents were enlightened on the importance of paying tax. 
you have to register with the Federal Indian Revenue Service, declare your income, then file your returns and make payments. And the FRS have given the taxpayers the opportunity to assess themselves. We call it self-assessment. At least we are keeping to their rules. We deduct 7.5% on each of every items. And at the end of the month, we calculate it and we pay them. Internally generated revenue is a series of taxes that me and you are supposed to be paying. We sensitize our clients uh, to pay the appropriate taxes as and as when do. The Federal Inland Revenue Service is a federal financial institution with a mandate of tax collection. In Bauchi, Charity Zaka, NTA News. Meanwhile, Enugu Michael and Small Tax Office of the Federal Inland Revenue Service has reiterated its doggedness to ensure that business owners in Enugu, Metropolis and environs are duly acquainted with the importance of tax administration. The tax controller of the Enugu service, Stella Ndidi Amaka Obiora, hatched on the issue at the FIRS monthly tax Thursday held in Enugu. Kelechi Ohiaga reports. Federal Land Revenue Services has offices in Enugu and various states in the southeast, from where officials carry out their functions of tax administration, enforcement and remittance. In 2011, FIRS created a taxpayer service department for enhanced focus on taxpayers as well as national taxpayer advocate position to ensure effective high-level advocacy for taxpayers. In view of this, the management of Federal Inland Revenue Services has set aside second Thursday of every month to engage taxpayers on issues pertaining tax, hence the roadshow and visitations to companies by Enugu MSTO. They needed us to educate, enlighten and sensitize the taxpayers on what tax is all about and their civic responsibility to the government and to this nation. So that is why every second Thursday of the month, every office in FIRA is expected to do this tax Thursday. Some of the companies and business zones visited were Villa Toscana Hotels, Rewind Lodge Replace, Ballroom Square, an innocent manufacturing company where the tax boss had one-on-one -on -one interaction with FIRA's customers. If you pay a tax where well, your door will be open. Government will do government is doing their best to support we that paying tax. All my requests from government, they are doing it for me. So why well, there's no reason I will not pay my tax well. The service earlier paid a sympathy visit to commiserate with her customer, MC Chris Merchants, that lost goods worth billions of naira to a fire disaster. In Enugu, Kelechi Ochiara, NTA News. Away from taxation, recurrent flood in Delta State is forcing communities to build resilience against its impact. Nestled on the bank of the Niger, Okanala and her people are surviving the flood in curious ways. Approaching Yenegoa from the Ugeli Patani sections of the East West Road in Delta State was nightmarish as at Thursday, 13th October 2022. By Friday, it has become impossible. I thought like uh, some of the children are put on the road, like this one that's tumble here. You understand? It's too bad here. And if this slap you like shit from here, and nobody can pass this place. Was the uh, uh, Adyama to to Ume? That is the most dangerous place on the road at this moment. It is worse accessing Yenegua from River State. The road is cut off before Okobe in Aouda West local government area. Passengers are stranded there. They went through a lot getting to this point. But they tell me they cannot go any further. We couldn't get a bus because they say the road is blocked. And the ones that are going, they say you have to stop at a place. According to them, the road is cut. Then you either swim across or you enter a canoe across and then you find your way. So we've been stranded here. We cannot even get the vehicle that will take us across. <laughs> The, the flood. So I am still anticipating. If at the end of the day I'm not able to get a vehicle that will take me across, then I will go back to Inagua. 
I think the ama. You see this big bear that is to carry cow. The little last bear ko. At two thousand naira. So I hold that. They carry more than two hundred percent see that bear ko. The current is getting stronger. The water level is getting higher. There is no telling how long before the flood empties into the Atlantic Ocean and frees up the road for movement. Onengye Fine Face. And news. Focus on making your fish dare to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news, or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being a bullfrog, by being civil, patriotic, and showing empathy. Let's train hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Thanks for staying with us. The last batch of passengers taken hostage by terrorists who attacked the Abuja Kaduna train now breathe a air, the air of freedom. But the covert operation which brought about their release was long, tough, and dangerous. Tuning to one on one tonight at 10. 30 p.m. as Professor Usman Yusuf, Secretary Chief of Defense Staff Action Committee, gives insight. And that ends the news tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to always join the campaign against rape and rapists. I'm Elizabeth Omori. <laughs>